The search for what to preach about during Easter season reminds me a bit of going out to eat when our sons were young. James, the older, pretty much had his mind made up in the car on the way. Samuel sat quietly at the restaurant table while the menu was read to him several times, complete with descriptions of manner of preparation and collateral ingredients. He wore his usual serious face and overthinking cap. By the wait staff's third visit to us on a good day, he had decided, sort of, what he was going to eat, maybe. There's so much to say at Eastertide, where to begin. The Lord is risen, the tomb is empty, you heard it first from the women. Some believed, some had to be convinced. Jesus stopped by to visit, sometimes walking through walls. Put away your tears, time to rejoice. Every reason to pinch yourself. It is true. He is risen. Indeed, he has. He is. Our gospel reading today is from Luke. As the disciples are standing around talking about all that is happening, Jesus materializes, invites them to touch his wounds, and asks for something to eat. Are you beginning to understand what I have been trying to tell you? What God had been trying to tell everyone throughout history, Moses, the law, the prophets. I return to scripture to look at the Matthew, Mark, and John accounts of Jesus' appearances following the resurrection, recalling that for the two previous weeks, our gospel was from John. So I look at John. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast your net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked and jumped into the sea. A mighty strange reaction when you're told that the one for whom you gave up your former life, the one you trusted and loved beyond all others, even your parents, the one for whom you went without the comforts of home, sometimes without food, your dead best friend and teacher who you would never, never see again had returned. My first thought is Jonah. God let it be known to Jonah that he had a job for him. In a flash, Jonah found a ship headed for far away and booked passage on it. Get me out of here. I have no business with God. He's going to ask me to do things I don't want to do. Everyone will hate me and call me names. The seas tossed and turned the ship the crew did their best to save themselves and Jonah. But finally, Jonah's realization that God was after him moved him to not just jump into the waters like Peter, but beg the crew to throw him in. I will hide in the deep waters and God will not find me. Not only did God find Jonah, he sent a massive fish to swallow him preserving Jonah from death. 
My second thought is Adam and Eve. Where are you? I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Who told you that you were naked? There were no seas to jump into in the garden, but apparently there were plenty of leaves and trees and bushes. God found them. Our vulnerability, our desire to run away from God for fear of what God will ask us to do next. And in Peter's case, the burning memory of having denied his Christ, not once, not twice, but three times. What do I say to him? How can I possibly face him? Surely he hates me. He was my friend. What kind of friend did I turn out to be? There's so much we went through together. So much we laughed about, cried about, wondered about. He taught me so much about God, about people that I love, even about people I don't like so much. He taught me about myself. I told him I didn't even know him. How could I do that? Why did I do that? The smell of cooking fish on the charcoal fire brings the disciples to shore. And when the feast is over, Jesus takes Peter aside and asks him not once, not twice, but three times, do you love me? Are you with me? Are you one of mine? If ye love me, keep my commandments. Tend to my sheep, feed them, watch over them, listen to their cries, mourn with them, rejoice with them, value them, ask them who they are, what their stories are, who they love. Remember their names, love them for the color of their skin, not in spite of it. Be patient, be kind, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. One wonders, why do we go through the church year over and over again? Why do we read about Jesus' birth, his ministry of healing, feeding the hungry, stirring up trouble with the authorities, his parade appearance into Jerusalem on a donkey, his mock trial, his horrible death, his getting the last laugh on his day of resurrection, we know all this. We've hear, been hearing about it since forever. Is it so we can worry about where to put the tree, how to get presents with no job, no money, Easter decorations, flower arrangements for the altar? Is it to match up the sanctuary colors with the Ordo calendar? What if this is all about remembering and not remembering as in, let's not forget, but remembering as in reliving, experiencing to our very core what the followers of Jesus experienced centuries ago. Peter was given the grace we are given every time we receive communion. We relive, we experience the touch of the hands, the feet, 
the face of Jesus through the feel, the touch of the bread and wine. Peter and his colleagues have just stood around Jesus, touching his hands, his feet, his face, and being present with him. Peter's beyond being ashamed of himself, repentant to the point of wanting to disappear, to escape permanently from everyone and everything. But he's brought back by Jesus' words, bring me some of the fish just caught, tend my sheep. And by the physical nearness of Jesus, close enough to touch. It would be so easy for us to dismiss church and religion. Jesus was real 2,000 years ago. This is 2021. What possible relevance can all of that have for us? Miracles don't happen anymore. That was then. This is now. But we share with God's grace given to Peter and of all those who have witnessed to Jesus resurrected and of all those who out throughout these 2,000 years have been graced by God to receive the bread and wine. We relive, we experience the touch and feel and presence of God's Son in our midst, even on Zoom. He is here, he is risen, he is with us. We touch him, we hear him, we know him. God with us, hallelujah. <laughs>